Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum product difference between two pairs. A pair is defined as two numbers and the product difference between two different pairs is defined as the product of the first pair, A times B, subtracted by the product of the second pair, which is C times D. So this is just the definition. Now, in terms of like the example, given an input array like this, which is guaranteed to only contain positive integers, and is going to have at least four elements in it, we want to choose four distinct elements from the array such that we maximize this formula. Initially, you might think, let's just brute force it. But actually, this is math, and we can try to notice some patterns, which there are here. What do you think is going to lead us to maximize this formula? We probably want to maximize this left side, and we probably want to minimize this right side because we're adding this amount and we're subtracting this amount. Okay, how do we do that? Well, when you're just taking the product of two numbers, you probably want to maximize each individual number because the product of those then is also going to be maximized. When you want to minimize the product of two numbers, you probably just want to minimize those individual numbers. Once you understand all of that, you realize what this problem is really asking for is find the two maximum elements from the array. They have to be distinct and also find the two minimum elements from the array and they also have to be distinct. Once you've done that, you can pretty much just apply this formula and then return the result because that's what we're trying to do here, return the product difference between these two pairs. So how exactly do we do that? Your mind might jump to just iterating over the two arrays and try to find the two max and two minimum elements. But there's actually an easier way to do this. We can rearrange the array. If we want the maximum elements and the minimum elements, it probably makes sense to take the input array and sort it. Because when you do that, we have pretty much solved the problem. Because think of it, if you had four numbers and you sort them, they look like this, one, two, three, four. What do you do? These are the two maximum elements. These are the two minimum minimum elements, we can apply the formula, we just solved the problem. The downside of this solution is the time complexity is going to come from the sorting, which is going to be n log n. No extra memory needed, though, depending on how the sorting is implemented. I assume you're not going to implement that from scratch. You're probably just going to use like a library method. Now, can we do better? Yes, we can, because as I talked about, the solution where we just iterate over the array and try to find the two max and two minimum elements, if we can implement it correctly, is going to be big O of n and also no extra space needed. So that is the target solution. Before I explain this solution, I do want to mention you might forget that there is another way to sort numbers with a data structure called a heap. And you might forget that because the sorting solution is just so simple. But actually, we can solve this problem with a heap and I think we'll actually need two heaps, that can actually also be done in big O of n time. Now, the downside is since we are using a heap, we're going to need extra space. I'll briefly explain the solution for that. What we would do is first create a max heap from all these elements. We would do that with a method called heapify, which actually runs in big O of n time. And once we've done that, we created the max heap. We can easily get the two maximum elements just by popping from that max heap twice. Each pop is going to be log n. So the overall time complexity of getting the two max elements is going to be n plus log n. And of course, n is bigger than log n. So we can just forget this term. And we would do pretty much the exact same thing to find the minimum elements. Only difference is we would also create a min heap to do that. Then we pretty much have solved the problem. Once we found these elements, we can apply this formula. OK, so that's the heap solution. I won't code it up because there is a more efficient solution that doesn't take extra memory. It is finding these two elements. Now, the question is, how do we do it? Well, for the most part, I think it's just going to be easier if I explain it within the code, but I want to give you a bit of the intuition. So let's say these are our numbers. 
we're going to keep track of the max element. I'm going to call that max one. And we're going to keep track of the second largest element. I'm going to call that max two. And we're going to do the same thing with the minimum elements. The most minimum is going to be min one. And I'm going to call the second smallest element min two. We're going to keep track of these in these variables. Since we're trying to maximize these elements, let's initialize them to small numbers. They will be initialized to zero, both of them. Since we're trying to minimize these, let's initialize them to large numbers they will be initialized to infinity initially. What we're going to do here, and I guess I should add the second one for each of these two, at a high level, we're going to iterate over every element in the input array. By the time we've gone through this entire array, we should have picked out the two largest numbers, in this case, six and seven, and assigned them to these two variables. Seven will be first because max one is the largest. Six will be second because it's uh, the second largest. And we're going to do the same thing with the minimum elements. So two and four are the smallest. Two is going to go here and four is going to go here. The smallest is going to be two and second smallest is four. Then we found our solution and you notice something. As long as we put the two largest numbers here and the two smallest numbers here, we actually guarantee that there won't be overlaps between these because how could it be possible that we did not choose four distinct integers if we do that? The only way that would be theoretically possible is if the two largest numbers also happen to be the same as the two smallest numbers. How would that be possible if we have four integers in the input? It would only be possible if all four of the integers happen to be the exact same. They could be all fours or it could be all like threes, for example. And that would be fine because that would mean two of these threes belong to this group and the other two threes belong here. They technically are distinct numbers. The numbers aren't distinct, but the index of each number is technically distinct. We're not reusing any of these individuals. So that's why this solution will work. Now, in terms of implementing it, I will mostly save that for the code, but at a high level, I'll quickly go over it. For each number, the way I'm going to code it, I'm going to ask myself, is this number larger than the second smallest number? And in this case, it is. Next, I'm going to ask myself, is it larger than the largest number? Yes, it's larger than the largest. So what I would do is put the five in this spot and I would take whatever number happened to be here and then move that to the second smallest. And inversely, I would kind of do the same thing with the minimums as well. Like for example, with five, I'd say, is this smaller than min two? Yes, it is. So before we now replace this with five, we're going to ask ourselves, is it also smaller than the smallest number? And if it is, then we actually put that five over here and we would take whatever we have here and move it over there. That's the idea. Now I'm going to code it up. So here I have just initialized those two variables as we kind of talked about in the drawing explanation. I don't think you want to see me type all that out. Now we're going to implement the algorithm. Go through every number in the input array. Like I said, we're going to first ask, is this number larger than the second largest number that we have? Okay, it is. So now the question we need to know is, should we put n in this spot or should we put it in this spot? So let's find out now, is n also larger than max one? If it is, then we say max one is going to be equal to n. And we would also say max two is going to be equal to the original value of max one. In Python, you can do this double assignment. Both of these will pretty much be executed in parallel. At least that's how you can think about it. Now, if this wasn't the case, then we can't do that. Then we can only replace max two with n. So that's how we do this part. Now, the next part is with replacing the minimums. You might be thinking, should we put an else if here? Should we say n is smaller than min two? And you'd actually be wrong. We don't need an else, and that will make the solution incorrect. You don't put the else here because as we're going through an input array, for example, it might be one, two, three, four. Initially, when we get to the first one, this if statement is going to execute because we initialize these to zeros. So we would end up setting like max one equal to one. If we had an else if here, then this part would not execute, but that would lead to the wrong solution because we know that one actually is 
the minimum. It's not the maximum. It might temporarily be set to max one, but it's not the largest in this array. What we're saying here by having both of these just be if statements is that sometimes at some point they might overlap, like min one might have the same value as max one. That's okay because we know for sure by the end of this array, they will be set to distinct integers, or at least integers at distinct indices. So that's why we don't need the else over here. To finish this up, if n is smaller than min 2, now we need to ask ourselves, is it also smaller than min 1? If it is, we do pretty much what we did up above. Min 1 is going to be set to n, and min 2 is going to be set to the original value of min 1. Otherwise, we just replace min 2 and set it equal to n. So that's pretty much the entire code. Only thing left for us to do is return the result, which they pretty much gave us the formula to do that. Max one multiplied by max two subtracted by min one times min two. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.